Thank you all. This is a beautiful couple right here on this uh, book cover. Uh, Johnny and Ken uh, Tata are, uh, Eric's and Tata, they are just a really uh, special couple. And uh, Betty and I have known about uh, Johnny pretty much since uh, she had a pretty uh, a traumatic experience. And uh, it was Billy Graham and uh, his son-in-law and family that told us about this incredible young woman. And uh, we watched the journey. And she and the, the love of her life, Ken, who loves her, but is so open and honest about the challenges that they've gone through when she, in an accident, uh, broke her neck and was, was basically paralyzed. And she's a miracle. I want you to give a really great welcome to Ken and Johnny Erickson. <laughs> Johnny, I, I, I knew when things happened and I knew how you began to give God glory in the face of uh, almost unbearable uh, circumstances. And how are you doing now, many years later? How are you? Well, 47 years in this wheelchair as a quadriplegic. Um, James, don't be thinking I'm a veteran at this and a pro at this. I wake up every morning facing somebody else giving me a bed bath, doing my toileting routines, um, strapping on my corset, getting me dressed, slinging me in the wheelchair, pushing me to the bathroom, brushing my teeth, brushing my hair, <laughs> blowing my nose. And uh, honestly, James and Betty, I, every morning without fail, I say, Jesus, I cannot do this. Mm. I can't do this, please. I can't do quadriplegia, but I can do all things through you <laughs> as you strengthen me. <laughs> and I don't know, by 7.35 in the morning, I've got joy sent straight from heaven. <laughs> and I've often wondered, boy, what would it be like to wake up in the morning, throw back the covers, jump out of bed, take a quick shower, scarf down breakfast? <laughs> I don't, I don't think I'd be needing God as desperately. Mm -hmm. So what I described earlier, I think, is a very Christian way to wake up yeah. in the morning, needing Jesus yes. desperately, yes. requiring him urgently. Absolutely. And uh, that's why the wheelchair, it's, it's, it's a bruising of a blessing. It's a bruising of a blessing, but a rich blessing. And that's how I'm doing, James. I'm just getting <laughs> up in the morning and uh, taking a deep breath and leaning hard into Jesus. Amen. Well, it shows. And, and I got to be honest about that whole journey and the truth of it when I got to ask this question. As wonderful as Jesus is like that, is it not somewhat encouraging and comforting when you see Jesus dressed up in somebody else's body and beginning to express the love of Jesus the way Jesus yes. would? Absolutely. And has Ken been that person? I was in the hospital with pneumonia not long ago. And I... I was so worn out from coughing because I have no chest muscles, no abdominal muscles. People have to pound on my back, push on my abdomen. And in the middle of the night, Ken, Ken was by my side. He's slept on a chaise lounge by my hospital bed. And in the middle of the night, after my 10th time of coughing, I prayed, oh, oh Jesus, I need your touch. I, I need to see you. I need to see you. And want to tell him what happened? Well, I've never been <clears throat> taken for Jesus before, but I, <laughs> I got up to, to cough Johnny, and I, I reached out to touch her, and she looked at me and she said, you're him. Yeah. Now, I didn't know what he, she meant at the time, but then she proceeded to say, you're, you're Jesus. You're him. Mm -hmm. You are him. <laughs> and it was so wonderful to see Jesus with flesh on him in the, in the form of my husband. What a great guy he is. You know, I, I feel like I do fellowship with the Lord. If you don't know his word, you won't really know his voice well. And if you don't know his word, you'll be pretty unreliable thinking you're hearing all these sounds and it's always God. Uh, and it isn't so much of the time. It's your thoughts or an enemy making these uh, suggestions. <clears throat> but if you really know him, you can pretty well have a good time talking to him. He loves to talk to his kids and he really loves to talk to people who love to hear him talk. <laughs> and love to listen to him. Yep. And I felt like the Holy Spirit said to me the other day, he said, I I'm not really excited about being a ghost. <laughs> I like to live in a body. <laughs> I like to live in a somebody and reveal him. And so when you see him in somebody's body like you did there, that's what she's saying. Jesus Absolutely. was dressed up in Ken. 
Yeah. Just like he was dressed up in Saul of Tarsus and became Paul the Apostle. Absolutely. And he really wants to dress up in all yeah. the people here and he wants to dress up in everybody That's there. That's what I was going to say. We'd all be better off if we would get up saying, God, dress me up in you yes. each day. Yes. Let you be seen in me and in my life for someone else to be an encouragement to them and let them know it's possible. Absolutely. And as I will often tell other people who get a bad medical report, um, people who have a child with a significant disability, um, suffering is just the very difficult textbook that will teach you who you really are. It's um, like a lemon that God squeezes and out comes the anxiety and the worry and mm -hmm. the peevish disposition and the sour attitude and the complaining spirit. And a, that's the stuff, that's the stuff I think God really wants to heal us yes. from. That's, that's right. right, you're right. That's the stuff mm -hmm. that needs to go. There are more important things in life than walking. <laughs> that there are more important things in life than having use of your hands and having a soul that reflects Jesus is a lot more, a lot more special. You know, you tell though in this incredible story, uh, Johnny and Ken, the, uh, an untold love story, uh, you know, you're, you're in another battle the last little while, a battle with cancer. And, and Ken, you, you're open and honest enough over this journey to talk about times when it, it wasn't, you, you probably didn't feel like it was Jesus in you. And you got, you re, tell us about that because there are a lot of people who need to hear what, what you also experienced. Absolutely, James. You know, we, we went through all the things that young married couples go through. And there was a time about a year into our marriage where I was just getting tired. I mean, the, the routines, going out and shopping, turning Johnny at night, doing all the things that I, I knew I had to do, but it just got to be tiring. So one night I, I uh, sat on, on the bed and, and uh, you know, gathered up enough courage to tell my wife, I said, you know, Johnny, I just feel trapped. And I, I this was only two years into our marriage, and I, my response to him was, well, where was your head on our wedding day? <laughs> I mean, I'm a quadriplegic, didn't you know it was gonna be this hard? <laughs> What were you thinking? <laughs> and, and as soon as I said those words, I felt like stuffing them back into my mouth. Mm -hmm. And I remember apologizing to Ken saying, Ken, that's not me. That's not like me at all. Yeah. But it is like me. It's just like me. <laughs> and so that catapulted Ken and me into a, a long, wonderful journey of memorizing scripture. He also sat on the edge of the bed one night and confessed the same thing. I'm tired, I feel trapped. But this time I said, oh, sweetheart, if I were you, I would feel exactly the same way. I don't blame you, I don't fault you, I'm not gonna scold you. I think you're doing a great job. And I'm gonna stand by you and cheer you on with my prayers and encourage you and applaud you and do everything I can to make this journey through cancer as easy as we can make it. And it brought us so much closer together, don't you think? You know, I, I don't know, James and Betty, how couples make it without Jesus. I mean, from the very beginning. And, and uh, Johnny and I developed a, a communication skill. We both knew that oftentimes in our disagreements, we may not come to the same conclusion. But one of us was wise enough to say, you know, we need to stop and pray. And that's what we did. And today, you know, I think this is my, my, my greatest partner besides Jesus, because she is with me everywhere in, in terms of supporting me and praying for me. And, and I think this is probably our ninth year now that we've read the, or we're reading through the Bible in a year. And, it, you know, try doing that with your wife sometime. I mean, that really is a special, special <laughs> it time. It is. It is. I just can't even describe uh, how clearly I see Jesus in both of you. And Johnny, I have from the time after, I mean, you, I love Billy. Billy, I know you don't hear well. You hear me when I'm with you, but you don't hear well like now unless you really have the volume up to Billy Graham. And, and you were always good at spotting Jesus in people, and you certainly did in this girl. And thanks, Billy, for yeah. showing us Jesus and Johnny. And Johnny, I always saw Jesus in you. And mm -hmm. uh, I know there are plenty of times you could, we could say, well, you're just amazing, you're not complaining. There are probably times when you probably dumped on God and complained. 
and know he can heal. Why didn't he just get you up and get you going? And he, he can do that. And in my closet, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so he's going to, and, and I think that we know that, you know, you, you guys could go back tonight to say a hotel or something and she get up in the morning. We know God's able, but he's also able to get you up where you can't get up. Hmm. And Jesus can stand up in us when we're sitting down. And he's standing up in both of you. And Ken, you don't have the physical challenges. And yet you bear the physical burdens and challenges out of love. And both of you are being so honest. And I just want to say to you that I see Jesus clearly in both of you. And, and you magnify him and you're beautiful and radiant. Would you agree? Would you say thank you, God, for... <laughs> we'd just love to send you this untold love story. And uh, and let you let you read it. Uh, what would you want to say to people that are really battling? Well, I would say that they have a savior who has been tempted and trusted and tried in every way, like they are. My savior was paralyzed on the cross, nailed, unable to move, couldn't scratch his nose, couldn't wipe his eyes, and I can't do that either. But I'm so grateful that the God of the Bible is a God who wrote the book on suffering, and he called it Jesus. Mm. And I mean, he's not some meditating mystic of some guru of a God sitting on some mountaintop somewhere. He, he, he is always beside us in our pain, especially in our pain. Yes. And um, I, I, I think if, if we could just embrace him and then do what he did, Jesus was always reaching out to others, even when he was on the cross. He was. Yeah. What's he doing? He's caring about the thief next to him. He's taking care of business with John and his mother. He's serving, he's ministering, even yes. on his deathbed. And I think if all of us, our listeners, our, our, our friends watching, could, could find somebody else who's suffering more. I mean, Ken and I have been so blessed that we just have to pass on the blessings. We want to find those people who are suffering more than we do. Besides, you know, I'm going to get my new body one day. Yeah. You know, I'm going to, and we'll be there together, and we're all going to stand up, jump, kick, do aerobics together. And you know what? I'm going to sing in heaven, and people are going to listen, and you're going to run in heaven, and people are going to watch. Absolutely. And, but you know, James and Betty, I hope that I can take my wheelchair to heaven with me. Amen. I bet you can. Because if I could, I'd, I'd put it right over there, and I'd be standing next to Jesus with my new glorified body, and and I'll hold his hand and I'll feel those nail scars. And, and when I say, thank you, Jesus, for your grace, he'll know I'll mean it because he will have recognized me as the woman who came to him every morning, hemorrhaging human strength. Mm. And, and, and I will say to him, Jesus, you were right when you said that in this world we would have trouble. That thing was a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but Jesus, the weaker I was in that thing, the harder I leaned on you. Yeah. And the harder I leaned on you, the stronger I discovered you to be. <laughs> and that's so precious, it just would never have happened had I not known my desperate need of you. And now if you want, you can send that thing to hell. <laughs> yes. and Betty, I, I, wanna, I wanna share one th other thing. And that is, in 2010, Johnny was diagnosed with breast cancer. And there were some times with clenched fists that I was wondering, you know, God, what is it that you're trying to do here? And we realized afterwards that the, uh, the uh, declaration of cancer in Johnny's life was actually pretty well planned because Johnny now, I mean, as a, as a spokesperson, she was now a spokesperson for the disabled as well as people with cancer. And we have found that to be true in these last few years. She's four and a half years of being NED or no evidence of disease, and at the end of the fifth, that our oncologist says she can be declared cancer free. Oh, I'm so. But the one thing that I discovered, my wife is a fighter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's a warrior. Mm -hmm. And you know, I had a time when I thought maybe I might lose my best friend. I, uh, I watched her go through this battle and this journey of cancer, and it was, Oh, about three years into the cancer journey. Uh, and we realized that, that she's going to be around a little while longer. <laughs> I, I called a friend of mine who happens to be an outfitter up in Montana. We do a little fly fishing. And, 
you know, he's uh, he's a great instructor. Uh, By the way, we'll do that in heaven too. Okay. <laughs> but he he uh, you know he's a quintessential mountain man. He's stared grizzly bears down with a bow and arrow and. And, uh, you know, I often told Chris, he's a brother in Christ, I said, you know, Chris, if we ever go to spiritual battle, I'd love to have you in my foxhole. Mm -hmm. So I called him in that three years ago or, you know, uh, and said to Chris, I said, you know, Chris, I'd love to have you in my foxhole, but I want my wife in there first. Mm -hmm. Because I know that this woman right here is really a warrior and she would watch my back. And she has. Well, you both are. Would you 